All right, guys, welcome back to another Gat Cat Till video. In case you haven't learned yet, Gat Cat Till is actually the cat that I have on Instagram. We post some gun pictures for you guys that like those, some interesting memes, and of course, we focus on infringements a lot too. So go and check out the Instagram over at Gat Cat Till and stay tuned for more FRT content as we're seeing what makes this trigger work, what makes the trigger fail, and there is a failure point, but we're gonna cover that in a different video. So today, what we're gonna try and answer is one of the questions that a lot of you guys have, a question that the ATF is undoubtedly asking themselves right now, what qualifies a trigger movement with the finger, whether voluntary or involuntary, what design specifications match the qualification to call it a machine gun by the ATF standards, or NFA, however you wanna look at it. So today what we've got is the FRT-15 trigger installed once again in the MP-15. Yes, this cheap old build can actually run the FRT in its massively fast shooting capacity. We went ahead and put the H2 buffer tube. That was the prime buffer tube for what I've seen as of now for our results. But also we have a special guest. We have a full auto registered M16 lower that we're gonna be doing a couple things for. First, we're going to be taking a high speed recording of the trigger movements that happen with the FRT. Then we're gonna compare the high speed to the full auto. Then we're gonna overlay the two and look at rate of fire and see just how close we can get to each other. So with that being said, let's get started. So we're not shooting anything fancy. Ammo is precious right now. And anytime someone does a mag dump on YouTube, a bunch of rookie gun owners that came in late COVID or post-election are crying saying you're wasting about $1,000 in ammo. So guys, this is some Brown Bear Lacquered 223, a little bit low pressure. Doesn't quite cycle as fast as our 5.56 does that we've tested, which Hornady 5.56 does fantastic in this gun. So we're gonna go for it and we're gonna see how we do. Well, bolt film's open, that's fine. Gun's on safe, we're going hot. Gassy, gassy, Woo! All right guys, so you can see that the finger comes back on the trigger and it has this little double tap action happening. So the trigger breaks, it gets forward set, and then it breaks again, and then forward set every individual bullet fired has one complete trigger motion that is initiated by the shooter's trigger finger. While most of this action happens more or less subconsciously, it is in fact a single trigger movement for a single projectile going downrange. Does not meet the qualification of what's labeled as a machine gun because of this. All right guys, so now that we've done the FRT trigger inside the MP. Here we are with the actual registered M16 lower that is full auto, complete with the third hole that we are not allowed to have apparently, and the fun giggle switch to go full auto. So same test, we're gonna record trigger movements on the high speed, we're gonna overlay and see that it is a completely different, and let me tell you guys, we already watched the footage from the FRT, it's not gonna look anything like full auto. You don't hold the trigger back because that just causes the gun to jam, so I, I, I think it's a closed case. But nevertheless, for the sake of science, we're gonna do a full auto dump into the berm and we're gonna overlay to see how the rate of fire compares. Again, same ammo for the sake of consistency. We're doing Brown Bear 223 lacquered steel ammunition. All right. All the way back to that full auto stance. Here we go. All right, guys, so the comparison at first looks pretty interesting. One, the rate of fire of the FRT-15, when you know how to control your trigger grip and not over squeeze the trigger, is phenomenal. In comparison to the full auto, I think the FRT is gonna have a slight advantage, which is really crazy. Now, bear in mind the weight difference for the buffer tubes, the H2 versus an extremely heavy full-size rifle buffer that probably weighs closer to five ounces it makes a little bit of difference. The lighter the buffer, the faster the cyclic rig is gonna happen inside of your uh, lower, whether it's a full auto or in this case, an FRT-15. But guys, the footage that we see when you look at the actual trigger movement, you can physically watch the trigger go back and forth, 
back and forth and rock just like advertised buy rare breed triggers or rare breed whatever they're going by right now if you actually try to go to buy one of these things fun facts big daddy unlimited actually pulled them from the shelves and rare breed triggers has pulled them from the shelves again we have suspicion the reason for this is simply because there is a design flaw that's being addressed at least that's what the gen 1 owners are hoping but unfortunately for you guys that don't have one your only chance of finding one is from someone who's already destroyed theirs that you can modify or perhaps going to Gunbroker and paying those $1,200 premiums. But then again, there's no record on Gunbroker, right? Kind of. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this educational or at least a little bit of learning about what the FRT really can do and how it complies versus a machine gun. If you like the video, follow for more content. Make sure you subscribe because that helps my small channel grow just a little bit. And again, thanks for watching.